It's time to down your unders. Down your unders. Review and dissection of content from some of the sharpest minds in the game. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Art of War. Down Under. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode 54, I think? I've got no idea what's going on. Episode 54 of the Out of Wanted Down Under podcast. My name, as always, is Adam Camilleri, and I'm joined by... Uh, I don't want to call him the old man of the desert. I don't want to call him the old man of the sea, but it is Mr. Richard Kilton, uh, current reigning, defending, oldest, most competitive man in 40K. Take that, Chester. Uh, how you doing, Richard? I'm doing great. You call me the old war boss. That's what you call me. Fantastic. I'll take that. The longest tooth, te- longest tooth in town. Um, and we're here to do the first half of our Orc Codex review. Now, I will apologize. This is coming a, day, a week later than I'd usually like to do it. But due to my commitments um, streaming the um, Lone Star Open and then my editor going on, on leave for a week, I did have to push out an episode before I actually got the Orc Codex in my hands. And then I didn't want to did want to half-ass it and, and, and rush it through something as cool as an orc freaking codex as this one is, very much is but to tell you guys a little bit about Overlord Down Under this is a two-part podcast the first part coming out leveling it for you guys general consumption on Tuesday mornings I believe it's 4 or 5 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time or the Central Time I don't know I just click the buttons and things go and then the second part of this is op- if up for purchase um, either over on the Art of War 40k.com um, where you can buy this podcast in addition to it, an entire bundle that will include both the Art of War podcast and and Art of War Unbroken. So you get a nice bundle, one click, all three goodness. Or you can find me over on Patreon and you can get involved, ask questions and communicate with me there. Um, but Richard, tell us a little bit about yourself. And I, I, sorry, I do have to give you the proper props um, with a much aplomb or whatever that may, word is. I've got no idea. Uh, but this this is no mean feat and no mean man we've got on this. This is the biggest war boss. Two-time run-up, Ren Man at LVO. Current n- ranked number one Orc player in the world and in the ITC rankings. And Richard, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, Adam, thank you. Uh, I also got to listen to a lot of your streaming at uh, the Lone Star Open last week. So great job on that. It's so thank great to, to have coverage now. So thank you um, for pushing it off for that, because that was a good reason. Um, so I've been playing 40K a long time. I've been playing Orcs a long time. That's one of the other things I, I'm really proud of. I have like, when you've been playing as long as I do have, you have tons of painted armies. So I have all these painted armies, but whenever I play competitively, it's always been and always will be as an orc player. So maybe that hurts me competitively. My buddies say, you should play other armies and mm. follow the meta. And I go, no, mm. I, I, I play orcs. I have and, one uh, question for you about orcs, though. What's that? Do, do you own an original Gazkul with the original battle wagon that he came in? Oh, of course. Yes. Oh, you're a gun. Dude, I, I, use, I actually almost always bring a model to games that I play with in games still today that is older than probably you, Adam. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. But I, I play with Gretchen sometimes. They're old uh, rogue trader Gretchen. That, with the little uh, pointy that, hats? That, oh, yeah, they're great. Yeah, Not, the well, pe- I don't use the plastic ones. Those things are hideous. I know. But, uh, <laughs> I love some of the old metal ones. They're great. Oh man, the original like the original space orc models that came out in, in like with the Rogue Trader era stuff. Some of those are just so hilarious. Oh, they are. Uh, They're so great. funny, so quirky. But so we're here to talk orcs. We're here to talk about this new codex, and we're not going to let you make you guys wait any longer. But first up, Richard, give us the hype. Give us your first imp- impressions. Give us your hot takes. So the, right off, I want to say how much I love the balance that they've accomplished. I was very concerned because you look at Death Skulls and you go, well, I was playing Death Skulls and now yep. they're, they're, they're weaker and I was concerned. But now it's hard to pick my culture because awesome. they're all very good. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say any are auto-take. I, yep. I would say that, that the balance they've achieved is even the ones that I don't prefer are very playable. That's so awesome. whatever version of Orcs you have liked to play, and as a longtime Snakebite player, I am Fan, so yes. happy. So yes, happy. yes, yes. But um, it really is a, it really is a tale of the last kind of couple of dexes, isn't it? Like, I mean, if 
I mean, ap- apart from supplements coming out and blowing every all the other options out of the water, upon first review, like when I looked at the Drakari book, I was like, you could make a case for all these things. Like people still take poison tongue, like not only just taking black heart, people still take here, there, and everywhere. Um, and it was certainly the same with Admech to a lesser degree, of course, Lucius, and then uh, blowing everything out of the water. But um, it's really exciting for me to know. And I'll tell you right now, my man, I have only skim these rules i've especially waited because i like to do these reviews with some bit of surprise so i can get some honest reactions out of myself and not just you know regurgitate stuff i've discussed with mates so yeah that's really exciting for, for me to hear that you think it's, it's really well internally balanced well and it's not just the cultures even the units i mean everybody there, there's a lot of people who are complaining well they just want to sell the new stuff and that's all so much better it's good but mm-hmm. there's still a lot of play in some of your old models that that a lot of people will be going, oh, I haven't used that model in a long time. And I think there's some secret sauce in some older units that people don't look at right now as very good that will have some really incredible builds. Surely all players are happy that the new models they got are actually usable upon release. Unlike the Gorkonaut, the Morkonaut, all the buggies, literally every release you've had for like the last three years has been dead on arrival. <laughs> So yeah, it's a refreshing change, hopefully, for all players out there. It, it really is. I'm very excited. I, I have so many lists I want to try out. It was very difficult to choose a list for Charity Hammer because there's so oh, many things I want to try. Beautiful segue. I've totally forgot to mention Charity Hammer, which is something that you're attending and I'm going to be casting, which should be coming out the week after. Should be sorry, Charity Hammer should be the weekend after this um, episode being released. So please jump onto Charity Hammer um, 40k and support the stream when it's on because it'll be on all that weekend 72 hours of line ga- live games some of the best plays in the world gentlemen of the ilk of richard kilton nick nardavati john lennon will be there and battling it out in one of the most stacked shark tank rtt's murderers row of the murderers row um that you will ever see and you're taking orcs my man of course i am dude well great i'm gonna sell part two here because part two we're gonna break down your orc list we're gonna unpack it why'd you take the things that you've taken what's this do what's that do and we're really going to talk through the list archetypes and construction that's going into these kind of first press just breaking ground orc lists wonderful but let's get into the review. We're going to start off for those following at home. We're going to start off at page 51, uh, which is the detachment abilities. And I'm just going to read out the first bit, um, which is the specialist lads. And these are the guys that you can take. Essentially, you can take in your detachments without breaking your culture, yeah? That's correct. Yep. So this encapsulates. This is Gaz. Uh, this is Badrock, Makari, uh, Mad Dog Grotznik, Zogrod. And so Zogrod's the new run herd, isn't he? And of course, then we have these specialist mobs, which in true GW fashion, they tell you about a big rule way before you actually get to read about the rule later in the codex um th- this isn't a big deal this is pretty much fair and foremost is self-explanatory but the next one is one um i want you to read uh, i'm the boss and tell us a little bit about what this means for orcs I, I will just don't forget at the very top of that you you didn't mention that gretchen do lose the obsec that's right apologies i thought that was on a different page um so let's let's talk about specialist lads and we'll go back to, to that one um is there anything really about specialist lads that people need to know or anything untoward or reading between the lines um not not i mean when we talk about specialists uh, you'll we'll get to that um it's it's important to note that they do lose their culture when yep. when they become specialists okay so that's, that's a little bit of a bummer i think that the, the power level would have gone up another level if they mm. kept their culture, but oh, so, I, understand, I understand why they chose that. Yeah. So when 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 gaz is in a non goths detachment gaz lose goths but they don't lose evil sons yeah that's correct. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I'm just, just making sure I got it the right well, way around. Well, no, Gaz doesn't lose Goffs. I'm talking about the specialist lads. Oh, the specialist when specialists. When you yeah, choose yeah. the specialists in your units. So yes. those lose their culture. Like, Gaz doesn't lose Goffs. He just can't use it as of effectively course. when he's in yeah. a separate detachment. That makes sense. So, yeah, Gretchen are no longer obsec, which is a bit head-scratching. It, I'm a bit, yeah. I'm a bit I'm, I'm curious why. Um, <laughs> it, I mean... I mean, they already gave all these, like, I would have expected maybe a restriction of an ilk of, you know, one-to-one like cultists got, but just to have, like, blanket no obsec for these guys. Do, does that really hurt orcs, or is that just not a big deal? It doesn't, and it doesn't hurt orcs. It hurts Gretchen. I mean, Gretchen mm. were already, I think, the worst five-point infantry oh, in the yes, game. they and absolutely were. I think were. they actually got worse, even though they got tougher. I, yeah, I think they're worse, but Dude, yeah, for, I actually for five still points, use yikes. them. It's, mm. I still have some in my unit, so it's it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Not fair. Um, what's this? I'm the boss uh, special rule. 
Um, so you're limited, basically you're limited to one war boss or one death killer war trike in each detachment. I mean, is, that's kind of fair that. enough, yeah. They've been doing that with a lot of armies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a, is that a big deal? No, because you want to take multiple detachments with this, as we'll see. You'll you'll want to take multiple detachments. Hmm. Not fair. All right, jumping over to the next page. We're up to page 52. We're going straight into the Orc clans. Now, like a lot of, well, like everything, really, um, you jump in, you got the Goths, you have um, their trait, their Warlord trait, their strat, and then their Relic. I'm going to read all the Goth ones, and then we're going to talk about them as a package, because that's really how we're starting to see them. They're a package deal, and yeah, you, there's got to be kind of, these days, for, for one of these to be good, for a... Um, a specific, you know, a Lucius to be good, for a Goths to be good. It needs to have more than one thing to bring it to the party. It needs to have a bit of a package around it. So Goths... Adam, um, Adam yeah? before, you, before you jump into Goths, uh, they, they did something with Orcs that they haven't done before, which, which I kind of like, and I wish they would keep going with. Your clan, you're, you're locked to taking Warlord traits and relics if your Warlord is part of that clan. So you can't take oh. the, the Evil Sun's Warlord trait or Evil Sun's relic unless your Warlord is an Evil Sun. Well, mate, thank you for pointing that out because that is actually a quite a big deal. So if you if you want to take a mixed, if you want to take some Evil Sun's and you want to take some Goths, if your Warlord is Evil Sun's, you don't get the Goth relics? Even That's if you... correct. Okay, that is really interesting. Yeah, I would like to see that included more often because that lets... I mean, because you see it all the time, especially with... um. Stuff like Drakari do it all the time. You yeah, know, you'll have your you'll, you'll get be getting the best of the cult of strife, and then you'll nitpick, grab, grab something here, there, and everywhere because you know you mo mostly your wall will be you know dark technomancers, then you want your super succubus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, that is quite interesting. I would actually, you're absolutely right. I would like to see that more wholesale, but it feels it feels a bit rough that orcs are co orcs cop it, no one else does. Like they've just it included it now. It, it is, but I think that that's why some of the Warlord traits, the clan-specific Warlord tricks and relics are as good as they are because they know you can't take them across culture. Ready for me to jump into Goths? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, their culture is no mucking about. Each time a model in this culture makes a melee attack and a modified roll of six scores one additional hit. Hit roll of six, sorry. Each time a model with this culture makes a melee attack, if that model's unit has made a charge or performed a heroic intervention, add one to the strength characteristic of that attack. Their um, Warlord trait is add one to the Warlord's attack characteristic and each time this Warlord makes a melee attack, improve the AP uh, characteristic of the weapon by one. Their stratagem is Unbridled Carnage for 2 CP. Use this stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one Goth core or Goth character unit from your army that has no, no mucking about clan culture. So, you know, it's Goths, of course. Uh, until the end of that phase, each time model that unit makes an attack, it scores an additional hit on a modified root roll of a 5+, plus, not a 6+. Plus. And then the relic is uh, the Iron Gob. I love it. Uh, goth model only. So this is a, this is a steel jaw, yeah? Um, yes. After making... Uh, Attacks in combat with the bearer before consolidation step. You can select one enemy unit within... Is that within three inches of the bearer or one inch of the bearer? Within uh, two, one inch. And on two plus, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. Um, everything on this was quite impressive until we got to the relic. And the relic, I feel like, is underwhelming unless I'm seeing something else. But dude, that freaking culture is superb. And that strat is pretty saucy as well. But 2 CP, I'm not sure. What do you think? Uh, I, I like it. Goths are... I think they're very... If you're choosing... A fighty list. Goths are very, very good, and that I think for two CP, that's that's a really good culture. I mean, a really good uh, yeah uh, stratagem. So plus one AP and plus one attack for the warlord trait. Um, I've heard some big things about. I've heard some big and, and incredibly scary things about orc war bosses. Is this one oh, yeah. to look to? It is. I think there's better, but it's if you're playing goths, it's not it's not a horrible one. Hmm. So it's so the culture is exploding sixes and plus one strength on the charge or charged, yeah. Correct. Man, the plus one strength is actually amazing on strength. Yeah, yeah. Going it, going it, strength it, five, toughness five is wowie. Yeah. Okay, so bad moons. Um, their culture is armed to the teeth. You add six inches to the range characteristic of DACA and heavy weapons. Models with this culture are equipped with. And then each time a model with this culture makes a ranged attack on an unmodified roll of wound roll of a six, improve the, the AP characteristic of that attack by one. Then the Warlord trait is the best armor Teeth can buy. The Warlord has a four plus and vulnerable save. In addition, add one to the armor saving throws taken for this Warlord. 
um, that it's a uh, it's stratagem for one CP showing off is use this stratagem when a bad moon's core or bad moon's character unit from this army is selected to shoot until the end of the phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack with a DACA weapon, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So that's old. That's giving it back old DACA. That's, yeah, that's old DACA DACA DACA. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Then the relic is the gobshot thunderbuss. <laughs> I love orc. Oh, it's the best. Name, naming. Sometimes, sometimes I do these reviews, and I'm just like, "What were they thinking, naming this garbage?" Uh, but this <laughs> one is this is these are fantastic. I'm gonna have a lot of fun here. So it's a bad moons model equipped with a custom shooter only. This relic replaces the custom shooter and has the following profile: It's a 12 inch range, heavy 2d6, strength five minus one, one damage each time an attack is made with this weapon. That attack automatically hits the target. Do not forget that bad moons have an extra D6 range on heavy weapons. Yeah. So that is actually range 18 18-inch. inch. And it's, so it's a super heavy flamer, yeah, essentially? That's correct. That's, that's correct. cool. That's cool. Man, that's actually a little bit to talk about here. Um, so uh, remember remember Space Marines in 8th edition? The best wall of trait they had was Storm of Fire, which gave you what bad, the second dot point of what bad moons is giving you. The uh, six is your extra rend. But um, right. do you, what do you think about this package? Does it give you enough? So, so I think it's good. I, I don't, I'm not really a, I don't really run shooty lists as yeah. much as I, I like to fight. You've been so, playing, you're, you're playing Orcs too long, mate. You just, you just gotta, <laughs> gotta get in there. <laughs> the never enough DACA. There's never enough. No matter how many cool things you give me like this, there's never enough. I look at it instead of saying, I, I've got plenty. I say, well, there's never enough. So don't give me more. I just want to go chop things. Yeah, exactly right. Well, so what are you playing orcs for? You're playing orcs for the for the guns. I mean, they're just a bonus. They're just a little cherry on top. They make noise. Um, yeah, exactly right. Look, I'm not I'm not excited about bad moons, but I, it does the, the stuff it gives you is not bad. It just we'll just have to wait and see if it's got enough context around, like the units that make that will activate bad moons that are appealing or not. Um, Evil Sun's up next. This one is Red Go Faster. Of course it is. Um, and of course it does. Add one to the move characteristic of models with this culture. If it's a Speed Freaks model, add two instead. Uh, plus one to advanced rolls made for this culture. Models with this culture do not suffer the penalty incurred to their hit rolls for firing assault weapons on the same tune which they advanced. So far, so good. Um, Wall of Trait is faster than use. Uh, with the double O in the use, which is nice. <laughs> in your command phase, select one friendly evil sun's core unit within six of this model. That unit is eligible to charge even if they advanced or fell back. Um, so that means you get around there. Because otherwise, you can only real charge if you declare a war, yeah? Correct. Beautiful. Which we'll get to later. Um, their, their stratagem is drive by DACA at one CP. Use the stratagem at the end of the shooting phase. Select... Uh, your shooting phase, select one Evil Sun Speed Freaks unit from your army. That unit can immediately make a normal move as if it was your moving phase. This unit is not eligible to charge this turn. And their relic is Des Mecha's Red Air Paint. Evil Sun's model only. This relic can be taken by a vehicle model. Interesting. Add two to the bearer's move characteristic. So that's plus four if they're a Speed Freak already. Um, at the start of the fight phase, this, model, this wallet is within engagement range of any enemy models. Those units cannot be selected to fight until all eligible units from your army have done so. Holy crap, this is good. It's amazing. <laughs> the all, okay, everything I just read out uh, is good. Every every bit of what I just read out, all four bits of this package are good. Um, are they amazing? We'll, ha- we'll have to wait and see how it lines up with the rest. But what are your, what's your take, mate? So I love this this package. Now, a lot of people are going, Evil Sins got worse because they lost plus one to charge. I agree. Having an ability to advance and charge at all is amazing. Yeah. Um, this Drakari abused the heck out of it. That's why one of the reasons they're so powerful. Um, it's if you're a fighting army, the ability to advance and charge, and even just being able to give it to one unit a turn that's core. And we will see how this ties into what is core because there's a lot of amazing assault units. I think I see what they're saying. So they're, they're saying that, like, oh, we got worse because we can't get the eight inch, eight inch um, re rollables from, from Deep Strike. Yeah. You still can actually, and this, there, there's a warlord trait called "Follow Me, Lads." Yep. that actually gives a plus one to anything that charges in to the same unit that that warlord charges into. So you could deep strike next to a "Follow Me, Lads" warlord and still have an eight-inch charge. So it, you could get it. There's ways to get it, but yeah, it's not reliable. Um, but yeah, having an ability to move a bike unit, which is now core. I think they can move like 22 inches and charge. Wow, wow. That's crazy. Now, they can't shoot because DACA can't advance and shoot, but 
I mean, you can do a lot of movement is so important in this game. Dude, and, so uh, important. I, I will tell you guys, one of the best so I play a lot of Dark Angels, one of the best stratagems we have is the double move. You can't you can't charge or anything, but it means that all of a sudden things like line breaker just become auto points when other armies have no chance to play line breaker. They're just auto points in the bank for me. Things like engage in all fronts, it's always going to be taken. If you shoot somebody off an objective, another unit can just scoot onto that objective. Um, you know, it, it's double double moves. So any double activations now in current ninth edition is worth their weight in gold because they're so scarce. So I, that's why I think this is good. That by itself is good. The Relic makes Evil Suns amazing in my in my mind. A fight's last of anybody in, in engagement range, and you can put it on a vehicle. Like, so this means you put it on the, the War Trike, yeah? Because it's the only character vehicle. Yeah, you can put it on the War Trike. Yep. Is there any other vehicle characters that I you uh, know of? No, but you can put it on the Squigasaur. Oh. That is pretty gross, because then he's movement 13, and he can advance and charge if he chooses to, and then anybody that he charges can't attack until everything else is attacked. Is attacked, yeah. Uh, so I was more thinking that the the tr- I mean the trike isn't as killing in combat, but it's got a huge freaking base on it, like huge base. Oh, yeah. You can tap two. You can tap two things very easily for engagement range. And um, I was just thinking about how you could spread your influence. And that guy, I don't know if the I don't know if the guy you said the um that guy's a speed freak, but plus four. So essentially every turn, um, especially the turn you call a while, this guy gets plus five inch move because he's got plus four mid- move and plus one to charge. So plus one to advance. Just seems, just seems some primo options oh, here for he's, making, he's va- making at, value characters. He wants to go. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, awesome. All right, moving on. Next one is yours. And I'm glad it lined up like this because this is the snake bites. It is the snake bites. The culture is the old ways. Each time an attack is made against a unit with this culture, unless that attack has a strength characteristic of eight or more, an unmodified wound roll of one through three for that attack fails, irrespective Oof. of any abilities that the weapon or the model making the attack may have. And then each time a squig model with this culture makes a melee attack, if that model's unit made a charge move or per- performed a heroic intervention this turn, add one to that attack's wound roll. Both Double really oof. good. Very good. Um, then the warlord trait is surly as a squig off. The first time this Warlord is destroyed, you can choose to roll 1d6 at the end of the phase instead of using any rules that are triggered when a model is destroyed. If you do so, then on a 4+, set this Warlord back up on the battlefield as close as possible to where they were destroyed and not within engagement range of any enemy models with d3 wounds remaining. Mystic Chanting is their stratagem. 1 CP, use this stratagem during your opponent's psychic phase. Select one Snake Bites unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, that unit can attempt to deny one psychic power as if it were a psyker. Uh, then the the relic is Brog's Buzz Bomb. Snake bite models only. This relic uh, is a, basically it's a grenade, six inch range, grenade 3d6, strength five, minus one, one damage. Abilities are blast. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. The bearer can only shoot with this weapon once per battle. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack scores a hit on a roll, a hit on a hit roll of two plus, irrespective of any modifiers. After shooting with this weapon, each unit within six inches of the target suffers one mortal wound. Hmm. Really good. So um, yeah. the most, the the most, the thing that everybody's talking about is basically what is the marine ability called? That the transhuman. Transhuman. They basically get transhuman. It's not quite as good, but because uh, it only works in reality, it only works on strength six and seven weapons. But it also works on things that give plus one to wound and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's useful. So I've had people downplay this and say, oh, it's not good in the current meta. It's not good, not good. And you know what? I think, firstly, I think they're wrong straight up because I think strength six heavy flamers on retributors are a thing people are going to pivot into to try and combat, you know, hordes of orc boys. And this then this matters. But in addition to that, you think of two of the list, two of the armies that don't have a ninth edition codex yet. That being Tau and Craftwork Eldar, that all everything is strength six, seven. They just spam strength six and seven profiles and yep. mass. As soon as that comes out, this just gets better and better and better. And I already think it's amazing. Well, I also play, I have a regular opponent who's a very good um, Nurgle uh, Death Guard player. And oh, yep. this this will will greatly affect the, because they have the all the minus one toughness and, and yeah. things like oh, that. Wow. And, then they, yep. and then they have plus one to wound. So he's always wounded my boys on two pluses with bolters, but now, now they, if you're running this this uh, culture, it's only five, uh, four plus. Yep, doesn't matter. Too bad, so sad. 
cop it. And then right. things things like um, Veterans of the Long War, which is also something Death Guard have, and we presume it'll be a two CP version of something like that for Rest of Chaos Space Marines. You know, all those all those plus the wound stuff just loses value as well. Um, yeah, I think it's incredibly good. Um, the Mystic Chanting's cute. Like, I mean, I was just trying to think of how that would actually work, and I suppose it would you would wait to like your opponent rolls a dice, like, and it needs a five to cast. Because then, if you spend that CP, you've got a you've got like a seventy five percent chance to deny, right. rather than because it's not great, but it's, yeah. It's, but you know, people usable. like I'm black ten plus player as well. I pay one CP for a four plus chance, right? And you get you get to see their dice before you trigger the CP before you right. try and try and go against it. So if they go for a warp time and they only roll a six, you'd be like, well, it's worth a CP just for the off chance of stopping you from you know winning the game. That's I'm gonna right. go for it. That's right. Uh, yeah. What do you think of the relic? What do you think of the grenade? It's it's situationally situationally useful. It's um, cute, yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not enamored with it, but it's mm. it's it's got its uses. It's blast, yeah. Yes. I don't mind it versus well, it, I don't mind it versus admech. Yeah, you, absolutely. You walk on up, eighteen hits, hitting on twos, suck <laughs> it. I mean, if they're Lucius, you're still not going to do that much, but you know, you'll kill like eight nine guys, which is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. I think snake bikes. Well, they've easily got the best just culture, yeah. Well, and d- don't don't dismiss the. We haven't talked about it, but the squig, the thing on squigs, adding one to wound rolls. That is anytime they make a charge or heroically intervene. If you run a heavy squig list, which there's going to be heavy squig list, and some the squig sword boss, you're going to see a lot of those. And they oh, with that dude. trait, they're even better. They're He's amazing. an animal. He's an animal. Well, and then you can also take the the smash and no, the knobs on smash the squigs. Those guys are crazy good. All right, jumping over to Death Skulls. Culture Lucky Blue gets each time you know this culture was selected to shoot or fight. You can roll one hit roll or one wound roll when resolving units attacks. Each time a unit model is, with this culture would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound on a five plus a five plus wound is not lost, and all their infantry models are re and continue to have uh, opsec. So that being all your commandos or your fast attack, heavy supports, etc., as long as they are infantry. Um, their warlord trait is opportunist. Each time you select a target for this warlord, if you select a character unit that is within 12, you can ignore the lookout sir rule. Each time an enemy vehicle is destroyed within six of your warlord, you gain one command point. That's pretty cute. Um, Wreckers, 2 CP is their strat. You just strategy at the start of your shooting or fight phase. Um, Collect one Death Skull's core or Death Skull's character unit from your army until the end of the phase. Each time model that unit would make an attack that targets a vehicle, add one to that attack's wound roll. And then lastly, is the relic, the fixer uppers, uh, Death Skull's mech or bid mech model only. Each time the bearer uses a mechanic or big mechanic ability, roll 1d6 on a 2 plus. The selected vehicle regains one additional wound. You can. S- you can select one enemy vehicle unit within 12 of the bearer. That vehicle uh, recovers D3 mortal... Oh, sorry, that re- vehicle suffers D3 mortal wounds. And, okay, you do both at the same time. And it's not once per game, you just do both. So every turn, you can do dish out D3 mortal wounds to a vehicle within 12 um, and re- repair a vehicle for D3 plus one. Look, I thought when I thought it was just going to be the first half, I was like, this is trash. Um, I don't sure we're in a vehicle-heavy meta enough to make that good. But uh, look, Death Skulls is still fine. Like people getting down on it, it's still fine. The reason, so the reason people take Death Skulls now is to give it, give people obs- obsec. It's not really for the rerolls anymore, is it? No, it's it's for the it's for the obsec. Mm. So what do you think about this package? The the stratagem's actually not bad. Plus one to wound in shooting or combat versus vehicles for two CP. Like I could see some metas where that's going to be amazing. Yeah, it could be. I I I think Death Skulls are a great supplemental. Uh, part of your army. I don't see many Death Skulls primary, um, but I think Death Skulls as a as a patrol or an outrider or something are going to be amazing because the ability, just the ability to have obsec on a character is is so good. Um, you can you can take a character and put him in the center of a unit of Grots because obsec is not the number of obsec models; it is the number of models if you have obsec at all. So that, that's an important distinction that a lot of people don't understand. So one guy with obsec basically makes it so that any unit is protect is is giving you that ability. Yeah, you're spot on, man. And you're absolutely right. It, it's it's very relevant. Um, is it interesting that when I read this stuff out, I'm like, 
this stuff sounds like it should be like freebooters or something. Should be like all this, all this, all this gain. You gain command points for like looting and wrecking vehicles. That sounds like pirates. Sounds like pirate pirate well, stuff to me. The, the Death Skulls have always been the looting faction. They're always been the guys who go and, and steal that's, stuff. Dude, and, that is fair. Yeah, that is yeah, fair. That's that's always been their gig. Mm. All right, tell us about blood axes. Okay, the Blood Axe culture is called Tactics. Each time a ranged attack is made against a unit with this culture, if the attacker is more than 18 inches away, then the unit with this culture is treated as having the benefits of light cover against that attack. Units with this culture are eligible to shoot or declare a charge with, but not both, in a turn in which they fell back. Is that almost exactly verbatim what they had in the last codex? It is. It's, yeah. uh, this one did not change at all. Um, and it's... It's interesting because it wasn't very good in the last codex. It's actually better now. I'm actually proud of myself for remembering that. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, the warlord trait is at the deep. Uh, it's called I've Got a Plan, Lads. At the end of the deployment, forces step. Select up to three Blood X units from oh, your army and going. redeploy them. Mm. If the mission uses the strategic reserves rule, any of those units can be placed into strategic reserves without having to spend any additional CPs regardless of how many units are already in strategic reserves, if both players have abilities that redeploy units roll off, the winner chooses who redeploys their units first. Now you've got my attention. All right, what's the rest? Uh, we're going to talk about this. Dead Sneaky is the stratagem, 1 CP. Use this stratagem at the end of your movement phase. If the mission you're playing is using the strategic reserves rules, select one Blood, blood Axe infantry unit from your army, excluding mega armor units. That is within three inches of any battlefield edge. Place that unit in strategic reserve. And the relic is Morgog's Thinking Cap. Uh, Blood X models only. This relic may be taken by a vehicle. At the start of your command phase, if the bear is on the battlefield, you can roll 1d6 on a 4+. plus. You gain one command point. Okay. Uh, a lot of good there. A lot of yes. good there. The, yes, yes, the, yes. The culture, the culture is good if you build for it. That's the thing. Is It's, it's what you're building for. Um, will will depend on how good this is. If you're just running a boys' horde, it's probably not the best. But there's certain things that if you're running blood axes, they're going to be really good. And that I've got a plan where you can pull things up. You could take if you wanted to, you could take like two gorkonauts and a morkonaut, and then put them all in reserve with that warlord trait. Yep, which is crazy good. Uh, going second, you put your chickens on the line. Uh, back in reserve we go. <laughs> Nothing for your chickens to do. Yeah. yeah, I love it. And by chickens, I mean I mean iron striders. Now, this is weaker in a lot of ways than a lot of other people's pick up units and put them in reserve happens after you know who's going first. Oh, wait, this one doesn't? This one doesn't. And that's where it's weaker. If you had that, though, uh, you could set mm. three units of commandos, 45 commandos right on the line. Oh, I'm going first? Okay, I'm charging. Swamping, yeah. But, so that's why they do that is so that you can't just charge with 45 commandos into their lines on but like one. raven guard does that and it's not blowing anybody's minds like I, you know? I get it i get it maybe they go maybe they realize that that with the wall ability that's a lot of attacks coming in from 45 commandos a few moments later i don't like it anymore because <laughs> 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 I, I got excited and now i'm disappointed yeah, yeah and that, that's why that's <laughs> my feelings why people, are hurt. people don't like it is because it is the worst of the pickup it is, it but is. I also get why they did it. Yeah, that's yeah, and you make a decent case. I do like this strat. When you have your little commander, you to come on, do your little scramblers, and then you get to keep the value when you put them, take them off the board next turn. That feels good. That always feels really good. Yes, yes. But yeah, the thinking cap, thinking cap's cute. I mean, there are actually that many things like this. You have to buy a freaking chapter master and get a warlord trade on him to get the same thing for marines. So I don't mind that, but you can't take it unless your warlords. Blood axes, yeah. That's and that's a problem, and that's um, the that's the issue. I I can see there are lists like having your vehicles able to fall back and shoot is is really good. So I can see taking a small detachment of blood axes, but again, I probably won't choose them as my primary. Mm. But those who want to, I mean, there's some good there's some good stuff here. Yeah, for sure. All right. On to Freebooters. Competitive yep. streak is the culture. Uh, each time a Freebooters unit from your army destroys an enemy unit after that unit's attacks have been resolved till the end of the phase. Each time an attack is made by another Freebooters unit with this culture from your army, add one to the attack's hit roll. This used to be like really convoluted. It used to be chained to a bunch of aura effects and all this other crap. This now, it's just, now it's just you kill something, rest of your army is possible to hit army-wide, yeah? Yes. Good. It's, it's pretty good, actually. Um, Waller trait. Uh, killer reputation aura. 
While an enemy unit is within three of this model, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of models in that unit, and each time a combat attrition test is taken from that unit, subtract one from the attrition test. Uh, while a friendly freebooter unit within six of this model, add one to their leadership of models in that unit. Um, there's, their stratagem is one CP, get dilute. You use stratagem at the start of your command phase, select one freebooter's infantry unit from your army that is on the battlefield. Until the start of your next command phase, that unit gains objectives secured. This ability is described, it doesn't, Yes, okay, cool. Um, and then we have the Relic, the Bad Skull Banner, um, Freebooters model only. This model uh, can may, may be taken by a vehicle model, while an enemy unit is in six of this model, it loses objective secure. Okay, okay. This has got a lot of good tech. Oh, yes. This is a lot of good tech. Not the Warlord trait, though, unfortunately. No. Morale, you know, I love that G-Dub was telling people we were going to a, have a more meaningful morale phase and then went about making everybody not care about morale again it's fantastic well, orcs, and hilarious orcs care about morale now a lot more than they used to yeah we'll get to that which is interesting um but tell us what about freebooters what do you think oh buddy if you if i was gonna run a, I, i'm sorry bad moons if i'm gonna run a shooting list this it's is what freebooters they're just better aren't they they're, they're so much better yeah the ability to get plus one and you could you could really have some nasty shooting uh, like we haven't mentioned it, but like big mechs now have a four plus ballistic skill. Yeah. Yep. So you could you could put a couple of shock attack guns. I know they're still overpriced. The relic but, one's fine. The relic but one's fine. If you if you were to put a couple of those in and and get a get they're hitting on three pluses, those are those are nasty. Um, but I see more the the ability to take away obsec and to grant obsec table wide. Oh my oh god! My gosh, that's so holy good. holy crap! So the only issue I have is get the loot it doesn't say if they already have obsec they count as double that would make it like oh my god that's that's freaking game breakingly amazing that would, that would be game breaking probably yeah it would but, be. i mean i take death skulls because i want obsec in obsec. certain places at yep. certain times you can just give it that's just so cherry good. and just so take good. it away same thing as i said you can put it on you can put the the relic on a friggin um copter uh, sorry a uh, death killer with a yeah. massive base and just here's this bit of the table yeah it's a six-inch aura off that huge base. He's like almost a quarter of the table. No upset for you, brother. Zero. <laughs> that well, seems that really guy, good. That guy has some pretty good guns when he's hitting on a plus one. That's that guy, true. That well, guy's not a joke, dude. Dude, you think about um, you think about how much CP and how many like tech characters that we take to give like plus one to hit auras to like guys within six inches, and all you need is like just some old bum to kill like the last wound off one dude that you didn't kill last turn and your whole army gets a plus one to hit. I play as a Cadian. I pay a, bu a bucket of CP for this every turn, you know, yeah. the whole army, I usually build my whole army around it. Um, yeah. and these guys just get it. Like freeboot is a sick man. They are there. There, there's going to be a lot of freebooter lists out there. Yeah. It's just funny. I love how you can't have four good things like as good as, the, tr the culture, the strat, and the relic is, the warlord trait is just that much worse. It's just like the cement <laughs> shoes on the freebooter culture. <laughs> That's it. That's it for the. That's it for the the um the sub factions. What do you yes. think, man? I mean, it's. I, I, I that's that's what I said at the beginning. They're all good. I can see building. I have actually. I do a lot of list building in my head and in 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 theory. And uh, I, I've got lists from every culture um, that, that sound fun and, uh, and could be very effective. I think the only ones that I can't see, I could not see myself using right now is Bad Moons, probably Death Skulls, unfortunately, and Blood Axes. I just think that like Freebooters make Death Skulls look bad. Bad Moons, Bad Moons. Uh, uh, both of them, both of them, because they, they beat them out for the shooting and they beat them out for the obsec. Oh, I get it. Yeah. No, I get so it. you're getting that that package does a little bit half of what each of those do, but it's their its own thing, you know. The one thing I think that Death Skulls still have over you can only do the freebooters if that's your main clan. So yeah. the take yeah, away takeaway obsec and granting obsec only if they're your main clan, and you're giving up stuff if that's your main clan. Death Skulls get it if they're your minor clan. So that's why I still say Death Skulls has play as a minor clan. I agree. As a major clan, as your primary clan, I don't think Death Skulls are very good. But well, I suppose that's that's what that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like your your build arounds seem to be snake bites, goths, evil sons, and then you have your like or your free three booters. or freebooters, or freebooters. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the other ones are just like his. Which tech piece would you like to have activated for this list? I agree, and that feels good, doesn't? That does feel good though. That feels quite good. That feels quite strong. 
I, I agree. I think it's great. I wish I do. I do feel sad as as a longtime Snake Bites player. I feel sad for those guys <laughs> who are now relegated to second tier. Um, yeah, but, but you know, I mean, some you have to take your turn. Except for Goffs, if you're the flagship, like if 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 the big bad in your faction is from that one, like if Ro- if you got your rowboat, Ultramarines are never going to be like the worst ones. Just like Goffs will never be the worst ones because Gaz is a Goff, right? Um, Although I think Gaz is probably done. Oh no! Okay, we'll we'll speak to that probably next week. Okay, but um, we're up to we're up to page fifty eight now. We're up to the specialist mobs, my man. Tell me a story. What the hell is this? Do you want me to read this? Do you want me to explain it? How do you want me to do this? Whichever one you think is more concise okay, so, and more easy for other people to understand. So specialist is an interesting. They 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 changed it from taking your culture away. So as a as a whole detachment, now you take the culture away for a specific unit. You can choose one unit. So I'm going to read this part. When you muster your army, you can upgrade one orcs unit from each detachment in your army to be a specialist mob. Each type of specialism below will list the unit's abilities. Um, and basically, you replace their culture with the specialist keyword. So now they are specialist whatever kind instead of goths. So the, the kinds are pyromaniacs, boom boys, fly boys, crumpas, mad boys, Sneaky gets truck boys and horrible get. Yeah, if I'm playing guard, uh-huh. I take scions. Yeah, in my guard army, and they don't get a they don't get any bonuses for being scions in a guard army. But everyone's still Cadian, you know. Right. But they don't get Cadian. It, but you're saying they get something else now. Like they could be like Landon lions, or you know, so to speak. You could upgrade them with something to give instead of Cadian, even though that's that's correct. And the the interesting there's going to be some they've got some errors just as they always do when a new book comes out. Because specialist, because it takes away your culture, technically, rules as written, a specialist mob can't get in a vehicle. So a trucker boy specialist can't get in a truck. Yeah, because it's not the same. It's not their culture. Now, how they fix that, yeah. Adam, is going to be where it's fun for them. amazing or they're good. <laughs> because if they give yeah. you that any specialist can go in any vehicle, then that, oh. that's really good. Or if they... They give you back your culture or part of your culture because you can't you can't use some certain abilities unless you have the culture. So if you give you back part of your culture, but not maybe the ability, then that would be amazing. But if they just say, you know, specialists can get in in any vehicle, that's still good. But there's if they change things a little bit to to give you back some of your culture abilities where you could use abilities on them, that could be. That could be sauce. Pooey. Yeah, juicy. All right, let's talk about this first one. I'll go, let's do the Pyromaniacs. So this one's for Burner Boys. Well, anybody who carries a Burma, essentially. Um, bomb, bomb, Daka, Snaz Wagons, Death Killer, War Trikes, Knobs or War Bosses only. Uh, selected unit gets Pyromax keyword has the following ability. Each time a Pyromaniacs model shoots with a Burner, Scorcher, Burner, Bottles, Burner, Exhaust, anything that's got Burner or Flamey, Flamey goodness, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, if when determining number of attacks for that weapon, the dice rolled is less than a three uh, for the attacks being made, make it a three instead. So one and two count as three, essentially. Um, is this any good, mate? What do you think? It's okay. If you're running Burner Boys, if you're running a lot of Burner, like a, a unit of Burner Boys, it could be it could be useful. I mean, I I don't like lo- losing your culture. It depends on what culture you are. They could be used. I, I I'm not a huge fan, but... So if you had if you had Burner Boys in a you know um, free Breeders Army because like the plus one to hit doesn't matter oh, yeah. for them um, you know there you go off to the races right but yeah you're right it's um it's not super not super exciting um so you can and I forgot to ask you this I forgot to clarify maybe you said it you can do you can have one of these per detachment yeah? that's correct one per detachment okay so it is pretty pricey it's pretty you, you're going to have to get it right you're going to have to get some value from it right um so what's the next one so the next one is Boom Boys Boom Boys each time a Boom Boy model Shoots with a weapon with the blast ability. Improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. I didn't say who these are on. It's Big Mech, Blitz of Bombers, Def Coptas, Mech Knobs, uh, Mechs, Knobs, Tank Busters, Wagons, War Boss Units. So basically, you get an extra AP. Not not great. No, not great. I'd rather get plus one to hit. Um, all right, Fly Boys is next. It's Blitzer Bombers, Burner Bombers, Def, Def Jets, Def Copters, Wazbag, Wazbag and Blagger Bombers, whatever it is. Uh, fly, each time a range attack, attack targets a Fly Boys unit. If the attacker is more than six inches away, then the unit uh, with this ability is treated as having the benefits of light cover against those attacks. Yeah, 
I'm not seeing how plus one save is going to save a, a Blitzer Bomber or a Burner Bomber if someone actually wants to kill them. Yeah, so they, they just don't have good enough armor. It, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make them that good. Mm, fair. Um, if this was on Storm Boys, maybe? But then you could just be taking Blood Axes and having Kirin the same thing. Yeah. But it's from this one's from closer away. This one's from six inches. Blood Axes is to 18 inches, isn't it? So there is a bit of a difference there. Yeah. Big Crumpas. Death Dreads, Gorkonaut, Mega Armor Knobs, Mega Armor Character, or Morkonaut units only. Um, each time a big Krumpa's model makes a melee attack, add one to that's attack's hit roll. That's actually good. Um, it's not bad on Mega Megano- Nobs, especially from what I've the seen. The problem is there's a lot of ways to get a plus one already um, to hit, so it's it's good, but I don't think it's uh, it's always going to be worth losing your culture. Fair, yeah, fair. In fact, now that you say this, like there's a, there's a bunch of stratagems, and yeah, like we've already said, a bunch of other ways to get plus one to hit. Fair enough. All right. Um, Mad Boys is next. Biker cavalry character mob and mob units only. Um, at the start of each battle round, roll one d three and consult the table below to determine which ability the Mad Boys units has for the, until the end of the battle round. All right, this is gonna be good. Uh, one is rash. Each time a Mad Boys unit uh, makes a pile in, if it can move six inches instead of three. Inspired. Each time Mad Boys unit is selected to shoot or fight, you can re-roll a hit roll or wound roll when resolving the unit's attacks. Oh, it's only one hit roll or wound roll. Um, and then Frenzied. Each time Mad Boys unit makes a melee attack, add one to the strength characteristic of that attack. Um, the last... Uh, number one's good. A six-inch piling's cool, especially if you want to tap things, wrap things. Number three's good. Plus one strength is nice. Uh, number two... Don't think is very good because you want to have a like. A, am, am I right in saying you want to have a decent sized unit to make a, take advantage of of this being worth taking away your culture? Probably. No, nah, I can't get with this one. It's I can't. I can't see like to, it. not being able to choose like randomizing. This yeah. is, is just so hard. It's they're they're all yeah. decent, but it depends on what where you are in the game whether they're good or not. So I, it's going to feel real bad when you really want one and don't get it. Yeah. Nah, fair enough. What's next, brother? Sneaky Gits. Boys, commandos, oh, yeah. knob, war boss units only. Sneaky Gits. Each time a Sneaky Gits model makes a melee attack, if the target is receiving the benefits of cover, improve the AP characteristic of that attack by one. It's not not horrible, but... It's not horrible, actually. You know, uh, what unit would you use it on, though? Uh, you know, commandos. Uh, commandos are... Uh, what's the AP on um, big choppers now? It's, it's one, and a chopper is one, hmm. so... I mean, you'd be you'd be two. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind a decent sized unit of knobs. Char- like, it's 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 not addition, guys. Eighty percent of your opponent's units are going to be on are going to be in cover. Yes. So this isn't as bad as it looks. This could just end up being this unit has plus one AP because well, every time it fights, it's going to be fighting something in cover. And commandos have an ability to basically say my opponent has cover. Even out in the open. <laughs> That's cool. I'm gonna. Uh, you're not gonna get extra AP against me. Too bad. Throwing camo on you. Charge. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds hilarious. <laughs> um, I actually don't mind this one. This is the best one I think we've read so far for me, at least. It's it's really good. Mm. All right, but uh, this one is the one I'm hearing most talk about. This is Truck Boys. This is one with that we've already been stated by the lovely Richard that has some issues that need to be FAQ'd. All right, this is Boys, Knobs, Warboss units only. A selected unit gains the Tank Boys uh, keyword, of course. Uh, a Truck Boys unit can disembark from a truck after that truck has made a normal move that phase. When Truck Boys units are uh, embarked upon a truck, each time the truck model makes a range attack, add one to the attack's hit roll. So they can disembark after it moves, and they move 12? They do. So the, do the boys get to move after getting out of the truck? They don't, do they? Well... Technically, yes. Okay. Because they're disembarking. After you disembark, you can move. That's fair. That's actually very fair. You can. Yeah, you can. You're 100% right. It's the same as the Impulsor. Rules as written, they can move. 100% you can. The same as the Impulsor. Impulsor, can, you can move afterwards. Um, so you're going to just sling a unit of boys, what, a minimum of 17 inches? Uh, not unit of boys. A unit of boys, knobs, or war boss unit. Yep. And so, but that's right, yeah. A minimum of seventeen, yeah, because it moves twelve, and then you get out five. Yeah. Oof. Oh no, you get out three, and then you move five. That's correct. So it's twenty inches. Well, and then if you're say evil sons, you move thirteen <laughs> plus three <laughs> plus six, and you call a wah, and you advance with plus one. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, okay. I can see why people like this. I can see why people are talking about this. This is good. <laughs> 
<laughs> what's your what's your pick? Is it boys? Is it knobs? So it's probably I, not worth I, wasting on a. I can see yet. I can see a lot of armies. You'll take a specialist trucker boy unit from two different detachments, and then you put them yeah. in a truck together. Mm-hmm. And so you'll have you'll have like a mm-hmm. war boss and a unit of you'll have a package or a war have, boss yeah. and a unit of knobs that can all go in together. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And I like I like the feeling already like regular knobs might be okay because they've been so bad for so long that this is good. Yeah. All right. Uh last one's yours. Orbal gets uh Gretchen units only. Um an Orbal gets unit gained the objective secured ability. Uh, while any other units, excluding runt herd units, is within three inches of any orbital gets, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. So this is if you wanted to take a huge screening unit of Gretchen, yeah? String it across two objectives and sit it at the back and be minus one to hit, right? Yeah. I mean, you there's uses. If you're going to take Gretchen and you don't have another specialist unit you want to take, you you know this is a unit you could just sit off in a corner holding an objective if they don't have line of out of line of sight shooting and just have them sit there they're obsec so if somebody charges in to try and clear them having a minus one to hit is it, it makes even killing a unit of Gretchen you know not not automatic you know where it's amazing the mirror match oh yeah cool no I I yeah there's, I can see a case for play, that there's some play if you. If you feel like like in a mirror match or any match that they're going to try and charge you on turn one, you put a unit of these guys like even in kind of hiding close to your front line um, mm-hmm. so they can't be shot up, and then they charge in, oh, you're all minus one to hit when you charge me. They, mm. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that, no. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so, and just to encapsulate the specialist mobs, the last three are the only ones I think are worth looking at. Is that fair to say? I, I agree. I, in general, yeah. I guess if you build certain lists, some of the other stuff can be okay. But the last three are probably the only ones that I've considered. And the last two in particular, I actually like. Yeah, I think the last two are quite cute. Um, I think the other ones, you got to have a really good purpose and unit in mind. Like, really good. Correct. Um, how, could you still take a squadron of Death, death Dreads and split them up? Um, you, you can, yes. That could be a reason for the the plus one to hit one being good, because then you'd get it on three units, yeah? I, I don't know if that's correct or not. I would have to read that. I don't know if you keep, not fair. keep it on all three. And what, they did have Death Dreads in that one. Oh, okay. Then I assume you would. So that's no, uh, Yeah, Death Dreads, Gorkonaut, Morkonaut, each time a uh, unit makes an attack, add one to the attack's hit roll. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you would assume if they you bought a, a unit of three together and they all split up, you'd assume you'd keep it all, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, no, I would assume so. That, that's... Not bad value. No, not bad value. But like I said, you can get that for a war boss. I mean, you can, you can, you can get that in other ways. Um, all right, tell us about custom jobs. Yet another thing I need my expert to explain to us, <laughs> so we can get our heads around it. So custom jobs have changed a little bit too. They they were really good in the last edition, especially because you could give one to a unit and then split them up, and they all kept it. Uh, you can't do that anymore. Now, when you get a custom job, it's um, it's assigned to one unit. Uh, but they don't cost CP anymore. Now they cost points. So you can choose one custom job. Uh, let me, you can't repeat custom jobs. They can only have one custom job. Um, that's basically the, the rule. So, um, the, gist, yeah. so the, the cost, let's go over the, the cost, or we can go over those individually. Or... Tell them about the cost. Go over the thing. Tell them about the cost. So Dabuma is a model equipped with a kill cannon. This custom job replaces the kill cannon, so it's uh, range 36, heavy 2d6, strength 8, minus 2, 2 damage, uh, abilities blast. It costs twenty. It costs 15 points. So it just improves improve your kill cannon a little bit. Yeah, it's it's 2d6 instead of 1d6, yeah? And it might be strong, one stronger. I have, it might be I have, one, one better strength, yeah. I think. So it's, it's good. Yeah, it's nice. It's not bad. Um, next one is Fortress on Wheels. Truck or wagon model only. This model has a 5 plus invulnerable save. Um, this is 20 points. Mm, 20 points is a bit much. But yeah, fair. 5 plus invulnerable. I mean, it's hard to come by outside of a Big Mac, yeah? I, yeah. I wish they would put 10 points for a truck, 20 points for a wagon. I think that would be yeah, fair. That, yeah, that'd be a lot more fair. And then your truck boy's truck gets a 5 plus invulnerable. Yeah. Because you want that thing to do something. Yeah. Garish, but- Gyroscopic Whirly Gig. <laughs> what a sick name. <laughs> it's on the Shock the Dragster model. Uh, any mortal wounds suffered by this model as a result of its Shock Tunnel ability are ignored. 
Yeah. And that's because it's got the it, it's got essentially got a um a shock attack gun, yeah, on it. Uh yeah, and when it no, this is for when it jumps. When it does its special jump move, it can take uh I think it's D three mortals now, which is which is rough. So but this this would be good. It's ten points, so maybe if you take that model, it's it's decent. Yeah, it's not breaking the bank uh, for 10 points. All right, next up is more Daka. Uh, vehicle model only. Uh, each time this model uh, shoots, roll 1d6 on a 4+, plus, make one additional attack with each Daka weapon that model is equipped with. On a 6, it makes two additional attacks with each Daka weapon that model is equipped with. Um, some people have told me about some options for Forge World units for this to go on. Um, so how many points is it? Da-da-da-da. More Daka is 15 slash 30. Is that the right one in my reading? It is. What's the difference? I don't... How do you... I don't... I don't see, see why. I don't see why. What's what's breaking this up into two options? Um, it doesn't say. No, nah, it doesn't. Um, all right, fair enough. But um, yeah, some people are talking about some Forge World options. I think there's one of the, the Super Grot tanks can take like a ridiculous amount of big shooters now, okay. which is, a, is all, all Dakers. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Somebody was saying some stuff. Possibly some stuff was happening. Maybe it was good. I think that's <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I do. I don't know why it's got 15 slash 30 on it, because I don't see any trigger for a second second bracket. Yeah. Um, is this any good, though? Uh, I See, I I don't. I haven't run a lot of the deck of vehicles, so maybe. maybe I don't know the Forgeward vehicles that well, so maybe it, maybe it, maybe it's good. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Nitro Squigs is pretty good. That one is on the Rucka Truck Squig, bottle, Squig Buggy model. Each time an attack is made with this model's heavy Squig Launcher or Squig Launcher, add one to that attack's wound roll. So that's a strength five minus two, two damage weapon uh, with a plus one to wound. That's really good. Even for 25 points, that's good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Actually, that's probably the best one we've read so far. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Um, next one is Red Roller. Uh, Bone Breaker model only it replaces the Bone Breaker's RAM w- ability with the following. A Red Roller, each time uh, this unit fights, it can make, if it made a charge move, until the fight is resolved, add D3 plus 3 attacks to the statistics of this, the characteristic of this model. And it is 20 points. Um, is that good enough to talk about? Is that, is that anything going Not on there? Not that many points. I just, you're going from D6 to D3 plus 3. Uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Fair. Um, I just I just actually pulled up the Grot Mega Tank. And uh, it's got three big shooters, two twin big shooters, and one shooter. Oh, that's that's a lot of DACA. That's, that's a lot, it's a lot of DACA right there. That's that's why they were talking about yep. it because it's got a lot of DACA. and then it can have more DACA, <laughs> fifteen or thirty <laughs> points. Who knows? <laughs> All right, what's next? The Shaka Hull, the vehicle model only. Each time an enemy unit selects this model as the target of any attacks in the fight phase, after these attacks have been resolved, roll one d six on a four plus. That unit suffers d three mortal wounds. Um, not bad. How much is it? It is fifteen and thirty. Again, they don't specify what the difference is. Maybe, Why? Maybe we're missing yeah, that's something, but um, maybe we are. But yeah, maybe there's a clause in the in the big two paragraph text thing that we're too lazy to read. Someone I, in the comments. I'm looking. Anyway. I'm looking while you go to the next one. All right, souped up special. Um, boom, Daka Snaz wagon model only. Change the type characteristic of this uh this model's mech special to Daka sixteen slash twelve. That's a lot of numbers. Is the the boom Daka Snaz wagon any good, mate? It's the, all the vehicles are good. They're, uh, I mean, there's certain ones that I've picked out that I find exceptional. But uh, yeah, there, there's use for that. How many how many uh, points is that? It's one? Only ten Super points. Special. It's only ten points. Yeah, that's right. That's fair enough. If you're going to take it, ten points is yeah fine. Okay, whatever. here we go. Here we go. If you're uh, so, if a custom job shows more than one value, the second value is used if the unit being given the custom job has a power rating of 10 or more. Okay. So. Ugh, power rating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. No? Okay, cool. Well, at least we got to the bottom of it. Everybody who's put in a comment early, shame on you. Give us a chance. We got to. We <laughs> no, it's fair enough. We did stuff. it. We got Sorry. to it. <laughs> it's just me flailing in the dark and uh, Rich has got no excuse, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is squid high tires. Squid high tires, uh, vehicle model excluding walkers and aircraft, add one inch to their movements. This model's move characteristic each time this model advances, add an additional two inches to this model's move characteristic. So what? Generally, just yeah. Do you want evil sons without being evil sons? Well, and also if you could add this to evil sons. So we've been talking about that. The, the Death Killer War Trike, you could add this to him. But doesn't he lose Evil Sons when he takes this? 
Not on custom jobs, no. Oh, oh, 15 points as well. So it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. But you know how fast that guy's going to be? That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Ridly diddly ridiculous. Yes. Um, next up, Stompomatic Pistons. Def Dread, Gorkonaut, Morkonaut models only. Add three to the model's move characteristic. Add one to advance in charge rolls. How fast is that guy going to be now? Very, very. Uh, how many points is that one? Uh, it is 15 slash 30. So 30 on the, uh, the Morker and Gorker, and I'm assuming 15 on the on the Death Dreads. Right. But once again, if it's three Death Dreads, it's probably going to be 30 points, but that is a lot of pluses. That's true. That's true. Fair. Now, there's a second tier to this. If this wasn't enough, you know, extra, it's Orcs, so there's some more extra. We've got custom mech custom jobs, which is a whole other thing. Is this just upgrading mechs specifically? So rules as written, it's not. But I think rules as intended, it is. Okay. Um, so rules as written, I mean, if you have these abilities, most of them are only for, like, a bionic oiler, that's only on a mech. The runt sucker is only on a runt herd, or the, the shock attack gun. The smoky gubbins. Um, but the smoky gubbins, oh, it's a unit with a spanners. And then the zaz krampas only with a spanner. But the extra custom weapon, it just says models equipped with a custom mega slugger. Yeah. Or a custom yeah. Mega Blasted. There's some Forge World vehicles with multiple custom Mega Blasted. Yes. So there's some... If rules is written, you could play 10 points and get plus one attack on all your custom Mega Blasted. I bet. I, I must, that, that Grot Tank I just read out, I think it can pl- replace any or all of its stuff with custom Mega whatever. I, I think they will FAQ that, but rules is written right now, you could make a very broken vehicle. For 10 points, you could give all its custom Mega Blasters an extra, an extra shot. shot, which is very good. That feels good. That feels good. Um, all right, so the first one is Bionic Euler, model equipped with an Grot Euler only. This model's Grot Euler can be used twice per battle instead of just once for 10 points. Um, what's the Euler do? It's a reroll to hit, or is it? Uh, it's uh, you get plus one to your repair. Yeah. Fair enough. Moving on. <laughs> Enhanced rut, rump sucker equipped with shock attack gun, models equipped with shock attack gun. Their weapon goes from D6 to heavy 2D3. Yeah, I don't mind that. Nope. For how many points? It's another nope. that's 15 for that one. Yep. Um, but yeah, 2D3 is so much better than D6. Like, wow, so much better. All right, extra custom weapon is the one we already talked about. Model equipped with a custom Mega Slugger, custom Mega Blaster. Only each time model shoots with a custom Mega Slugger, blah, blah, blah. Make one additional attack. This one is only yet, like we said, 10 freaking points. I, I, I gave it to my Big Mac in Mega Armor. Uh, and for 10 points, I'm just getting one shot. So on these vehicles where you're getting... All the shots. That's mm. really good. Yeah, agreed, man. Absolutely agreed. Um, all right. Uh, Smoky Gubbins. Smoky Gubbins. Unit that contains a spanner model only. If that unit remains stationary, it is treated as having the benefit of light cover until your next movement phase. Eh. Uh, yeah. No. It's what, it's one point per model, so that's not the worst thing ever. No, but it's but, light cover is mm. it's okay. Yeah, fair. Um, Zap Crumper, Crumpers, uh, unit that contains a spanner model only each time a melee attack is made by a model. This unit a modified wound roll of one inflicts, we are six, sorry, inflicts one model wound on a target in addition to any normal damage. Um, so this is unit that contains a spanner model. So it doesn't have to be all spanners, just have to have one. Yeah, correct. So what's a unit you could... Well, so now we've just got to think, what's a unit you can min-max that has the most attacks that can take one spanner at a minimum? Is it is it Burner Boys? Burner Boys, I guess. Yeah, because you could pump their attacks up in a couple of ways, can't you? To get them like four attacks each. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they were goths. And yeah, all of a sudden you could... Theoretically, you could just drop like, you know, 10 mortals on somebody. Yeah, yeah. Cool, okay, cool. That might be worth the one point per model. Well, that one's, that one's two points per model, sorry. Yeah, all right. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. We are up to the strats. Now, we are going to... Uh, usually, we would call it here because we are like an hour an hour in. Usually, we'd call it. But if I have to do the strats, the wall of traits, the two psychic trees, and the relics in the next episode, that one's going to go over. So, stuff it. Let's do the strats, brother, if you're down. Let's do it. I'm down. All right. I'll start us off with our first one. Um, one CP slash two CP. This is Kareen. Uh, use this stratagem in any phase when an orc's vehicle model from your army that is not within engagement range of any enemy models is destroyed and explodes. Uh, that model can make an, um, a normal move of up to six inches before explosions. If that vehicle is a wagon or Titanic model, that's a two CP strat instead of one CP. That's freaking hilarious. That's so I orky. love it. I love it. 
you you get to use this like once every two games. Yeah, yeah right, you won't right? get to use it very often, but when you do, it's just so fun to just go wah. <laughs> oh man um yeah it is really cool so you can just reposition it to finish off a couple of units or just you know smack on some characters i think it's going to be sick yeah uh get stuck in lads one cp or two cp uh use the stratagem in the fight phase when a boys or beast snag a boys unit from your army selected to fight you until the end of the phase each time a model in that unit makes a pile in or consolidation move it can move up to an additional three inches this is not cumulative cumulative with any other rule that increases the distance models can pile in or consolidate. If that unit contains 10 or fewer models, the stratagem costs one CP. Otherwise it costs two. That is really good. Yeah. You're going to be real happy. That's there when you want it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's certain now there's, there's certain times when, when that kind of movement is priceless. Oh, stealing objectives, brother is it's just going to be huge. Yes. Mm. or getting around the back of units to get into table quarters wrapping, or yeah. wrapping things yeah absolutely you're gonna be very happy that's a bread and butter yeah. right there yeah 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 um i can see right. i can see using that a lot same same um ramming speeds up next um two cp and you just strategy in your charge phase when an orc's vehicle unit from your army is selected to charge to the end of the phase when making a charge roll for that uh unit roll 3d6 instead i think that's what i'm saying um to the end of the phase when that unit finishes the charge move at least one enemy unit with engagement range on a d6 surface uh d6 of a two plus surface d3 mortal wounds did i get that right yes uh i think that's quite okay yeah 3d6 charge and a two and, and just a cherry on top d3 models uh, it is two cp for that but you know I, i'd happily pay two cp is okay for that for those two triggers you just essentially one cp for a smite and one cp for a 3d6 charge yeah, yeah. no it's very good um and that's a really great way of getting a charge from reserve isn't it it is mm. and that one's that one here been, we go that one was in the last codex very similar yeah and uh it's, it's always been very good next up gun crazy show offs for two cp use a stratagem at the end of your shooting phase select one flash gets unit from your army that unit can shoot again but must target the closest eligible enemy unit um nice that's good yeah it's double good. shoot Cool. Yeah. It's so rare at the moment for, for double. I mean, you don't really see many double shoots anymore. In fact, I can't remember the last double shoot I've seen in the new codex. Yep. I've seen I've seen double fights here and there. Like every codex kind of gets a double fight. That's the first double shoot I've seen in a while. And I can see like bringing this in a freebooters army where you're trying to proc that, that plus one to hit and have this unit. Oh, they didn't quite kill it. Then shoot again. Okay. We killed something. Now everything else in my army gets plus one to hit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Um, all right, hit them harder. Two CP. Uh, use a stratagem in the fight phase when a uh, mega knob unit from your army is selected to fight to the end of the phase. Uh, they get plus one uh, when they attack with a claw or kill saw. Uh, add one to the attack's damage characteristic. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. So kill saw has become flat three. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The one. The one thing. No. Uh, sorry. Claws become flat three. Kill saws become D3 plus one. Oh, apologies, apologies. They flipped those. They did. did they, they flipped, flipped those them. profiles. They flipped them. There you go. Shows you how little I've looked into this codex. <laughs> but yeah, same, same thing stands. Flat three damage. Welcome to welcome to Thunderhammer land. The, the, miss, the miss here, I wish it said knobs or mega knobs. Yeah, that's rough, actually. The fact it's only mega knobs. Yeah. yeah. Mm, you're right. Yeah, spot on. Actually, that's annoying. I, I love it. I mean, but I just, I wish... Give, knobs are better but that would have made knobs really good really good yeah, yeah you're right all right tough as squig hide um use a stratagem in any phase when a beast snag infantry beast snag a cavalry or beast snag a monster unit from your army selected as the target of an attack until the end of the phase each time an attack is made against that unit an unmodified wound roll of one through three for that attack fails irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making the attack may have um, so that's that's true. It's tr that's true transhuman. Yeah, it's yeah, true transhuman, which is great. Um, when you're getting hit by something and you just want them to live, it's a great one. Well, when you're playing when you're playing snake bites and someone's like, oh, "I'm going to hit you with like this unit of plasma inceptors," and you're like, "Well, my thing doesn't work anymore." Well, good good news, two CP it does work now, and it's you know it's it's better. You're going to be happy when you need it. Yeah. 
All right, breaking heads, 2CP. This used to be a universal rule on war bosses. Let's see what it is now. Um, this, use a stratagem in the morale phase when a morale test is failed for a clan unit, uh, excluding Gretchen units from your army. That has been three Evenly clan war bosses or clan knobs units. That clan unit takes D3 mortal wounds and the morale test is treated have it being passed. I wish that was not 2CP. I wish it was one as well. Yeah, I don't know why that's two. I mean, a lot of people, everybody kind of has a one CP. This unit doesn't fail. Um, why is that two? That's rough. And the fact that we know that's something that's been removed from them uh, morale-wise now as well. A um, bit of foreshadowing there. Yeah, I, I mean, you're gonna when you need it, you're going to be happy you've got it. But um, two CP does feel bad. Yeah. Because like, you have a two CP just auto-pass, and you don't take any mortal wounds. Right. Orcs is never beaten. Two CP. Uh, use this stratagem in the fight phase when an orc's character model in your army that has not already been selected to fight this phase is destroyed. Do not remove this model from play. It can fight after it's attack and death. So it's fight on death. Yeah, yeah. fight on death. Cool. Already had it. Happy they still got yep. it. Um, next one is two CP. The bigger day is use a stratagem in the fight phase when a beast snag a war boss unit uh, from your army is selected to fight till the end of the phase. Each time model in the unit makes an attack, a target size a Titanic unit add two to the damage characteristic of that unit. That was beast snag a war boss, yeah. Yes. A uh, plus two damage. That's really against good. Titanic. The fact that that's just like when you need it, that's gonna be incredible. Wow. So does that work on the the beast snag a beast boss? I guess it doesn't. So you can't use Why it on it? the one on the squig. Okay. Well, I think we're all happy about that. Yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> every 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 night player is like, Whoo! just swiping the sweat off their brow, man. <laughs> um, you could, you I'm could assuming make him a trucker boss. Oh no, then he loses beast snagger. Okay. Oh. There we go. Um, extra gubbins. I'm assuming that's the extra extra relic. It is extra relic. Um, big boss. Is that extra waller trait or is that second waller trait? Uh, that is. Yep. Yep. Easy done. Um, so next one is tide of muscle. One CP. Use a strategy in your charge phase when you select an orc's core unit, excluding Gretchen, from your army to charge. That unit can ignore all modifiers to the charge roll. So um, any or all. So you can take the pluses and ignore the minuses. So if you're charging somebody yep. in. In a in a crater, you're fine. Or oh, you you charging custodies? Yep. Oh, ignore. Oh, wow. They and you could use this after they spend their speed. Uh -huh. Oh, that's uh -huh. so good. <laughs> <laughs> you make him spend it, and you're like, ah, sorry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, all right. Unstoppable momentum, one CP. You just drag him in your charge phase. Oh, sorry. As, as also a as also a death guard guys that do it that give you minus two. Oh, so good. Well. So good. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, never mind. I stop a momentum one CP. You just strategy in your charge phase after a knob on smash swig from your army finishes a charge move. If that uh, has no any models within engagement range of it, it can immediately uh, select another, declare another charge. Yeah, we saw that one. That was teased by um by um G Dub. Does that is that any good? Does that have much play? Absolutely. Um, it's it's kind of it's it's really high end stuff, but you can get crazy movement out of a unit like you have a so say you have a marine that has one wound on him you just charge so you're within one inch of that one guy and that's the only one you're within an inch of then you roll five dice if you roll a four plus that guy dies and then you can charge yep. somewhere else you can charge crazy yeah. distances yeah 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 well or you can charge into the same unit again and re-trigger those models yeah it's situational but it's it's yeah. definitely useful i'm happy it's one cp yeah it's me cute. too i like it. me too Gross Shield is back. Tell us about it. Use this stratagem at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select one Orcs infantry unit from your army, then select one Gretchen infantry unit from your army that is within six of that unit. Until the end of the phase, enemy models cannot select the Orcs, the selected Orcs infantry unit as a target if the selected Gretchen infantry unit is a closer visible target. The visible part, um, the visible part, and the visible CP, part. it just yeah. it kills it. It wrecks it. I mean, nobody, nobody's going to be bothered by having to kill their way through Gretchen. Now. No. Um, although, like, you know, theoretically, it's the end, it's the last kind of things, last couple of things in a shooting phase, and they're waiting to dump their cherub, like, heavy flamers, and you're like, well, you were just going to clear this unit, so now I make the heavy flamers have to shoot, you know, the Gretchen instead. That's that's where it can be cool. But the application... It, Two CP is it, just... That's... Well, exactly. It went, from it went from bread and butter, build your whole army around this, to... Exactly what I just said, which is going to come up there one every ten games. Yeah, yeah. Um, fair enough. 
teleporter. I'm assuming it just puts some stuff in Deep Strike. Yeah, it's basically the same as it was. Yep, fair enough. So I'll just do the next one, Lim- Limbering Strides. Um, use a strategy in your charge phase when you use the ability to reroll charge roll for a Morkonaut or a Stompernaut, Stomper unit from your army. You can roll one dice of the roll instead of both. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, so in, you can reroll one or both. It's the or both, yeah. for orcs. That's cute. I like that. Yeah, that's really good. I wish that was what do you think? on anybody and not just on the Stompa. I think that would be a great... To give us back yeah. our old charge rules, I would love that. Yeah. I like that it says in your charge phase, so you can roll the charge dice and then decide. Uh, are you sure? Yep. It says use this strategy in your charge phase. When you use the oh, so when you use the reroll ability, so yes, it is after you've ch- you've rolled the charge. Oh yeah, yeah. You use use this so instead of. You can see of, it and say, "I just need to reroll that one." But you know what's dumb? Oh, sorry, no, you can't anymore. Yeah, 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 you can't. Because I was thinking like you spend one CP and reroll one of the dice, but you don't. You reroll both of the dice now. No, 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 way. no, no. On um, this is giving you that ability to reroll one die. Ex- exactly. That's what I mean. Exactly. It's giving you the old command phase yes. reroll. Yeah, the old, sorry, the old command dice reroll. Yeah. It's giving the old everything, the old eighth edition. It's like share loves this one because it's you know. Turn it back time. Well, this is how orc <laughs> charges used to be. Exactly. Yeah. And it was argu- arguably it was it was. Bad. I wish they had given that back for one CP to any unit instead of just these big guys. Yes, same. I don't know why it's just the big guys. It doesn't make sense. Burn them all. Use the strategy one CP. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a burner bomber unit from your army makes attacks with scorch missile racks. After resolving these attacks, each other unit within three inches of that target suffers one mortal wound. Okay, that's not cute. horrible. It's very, it's it's the same. It's essentially it's the same thing as what the the PBCs get for Death Guard, yeah. Yep. Yep. Fair. Um, monster Monster Hunters two CP use this stratagem at the end of any phase. Uh, select one enemy monster or vehicle unit and up to three Beast Snagger units. Um, from your army. Um, each attack, each time attack is made by that model of one of those Beast Snagger units targets the selected monster, add one to the attacks, so wound roll. For 2 CP, I don't know how many times you're going to have three applicable Beast Snagger units, but if you build into it, it's a good set, it's a good 2 CP. Yeah. Um, it, it does, it does specify in the, when, when we, the, that unit is, uh, it's unmodified sixes for the, the mortal wounds. So, um, this won't help on the mortal wound strat or the mortal wound ah, okay. for the, yeah. the characters. Yep, yeah, fair. Well, that's a, a good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it would have been too silly. All right. Cut in flames. Use a strategy in the fight phase. Select one Burner Boys unit from your army until the end of the phase. Each time a model, a uh, Burner Boy model makes melee attack, that attack has an AP of two. So this is what they mm. used to have uh, yeah. for 1CP. I love it. That's great. Yeah, it is. It's a uh, legitimately. If if you took pyromaniacs, this is a way of getting some really good value out of burner boys for a turn or two. Yep. Um, all right, more Daka. This is another OG um, strat. So two CP. Use this strategy in your shooting phase when an orcs unit from your army is selected to shoot to the end of the phase. Uh, Daka weapons that units are equipped with are considered to be uh, at max shots when determining how many attacks their weapons have. Yeah. Yes. So usually they're kind of a weird rapid fire to break it to just to foreshadow what DACA is when we get to it. Um, they're kind of a weird rapid fire. They, they have a lot of shots to begin with, and then when they're close, they get a few more. But now it doesn't matter what range you are; you'll just get always get the few more. It feels feels like two CP is too much for that, but I I agree. I agree. You'll have to have a very good reason to use it, yeah. a very good unit to use it on. Cloud of smoke. Use the strategy at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select one Speed Freaks vehicle from your army. Until the end of the phase, while a friendly Speed Freaks vehicle unit is within six inches of that selected unit, each time a ranged attack targets that unit, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Two CP seems a bit rough when a lot of people have pop smoke for one CP. Yep. Like, I mean, but pop smoke on just about everything else is one affect CP. multiple units. Oh, sorry. How many? Sorry, can you read that again? How many units so, does it affect? Uh, if anybody within six inches, any other Speed Freaks vehicle within six inches of that vehicle, you have a minus one. That's nice. Yeah, that's quite nice because you you could make some pretty big bike units, some pretty big speed freak units, and string them out. And yeah, your whole front whole front line, your whole army almost could be inside that. You know, oh, if it's a battle wagon or something. The part of it I don't like is you have to do it at the beginning of their shooting phase. Ah, yeah. So you can't do it reactively yeah. when something juicy is being targeted. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the only recourse is to literally build into it or yeah. don't bother. Yeah. All right. Uh, tank Buster Bomb, 1 CP. I'm going to assume this is the same as the Melter Bomb. 
strat where you get 2d3 against vehicles, and it is exactly that stratagem for yes. all tank buster bomb units. 2c 2d3 models against vehicles if they're in the fight phase, make one attack. And yeah, it hits and with as many models, commandos as you're going to take, that's pretty good. It is pretty good. I agree. Snag a grapple, 2cp. Use a stratagem at the start of your opponent's movement phase. Select one B snag a boys unit from your army. Each time an enemy unit that is within engagement range of that unit is selected to move, roll 1d6 on a 4+. plus. That unit cannot fall back. I love that. Oh, wow. Love that. Yeah, that's amazingly good. Um, it's only on a 4+. plus. Uh, yes. Mm, yeah, it's still good. Yeah, it's you good. can engage multiple units. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's situational, but I can I can see using that quite a bit. Yeah, well, I've got two... So Dark Angels have a 2CP strat for Stasis Bomb, uh, but if that attack just hits, so usually that's a 3+, plus, uh-huh. and that one goes off, and then I've got uh, Black Templars, 2CP, and on a 2+, plus you can't fall back. This is 2CP on a 4+. plus. Um, but it's every unit. Yeah, every unit. But it's every unit. unit. Yeah. Yeah. So you literally, ha- you literally have to tap to a minimum of two units to make uh, yeah. it worthwhile. To make it effective, or you you want to hit multiple units. Yeah. Or it's gonna re- it's gonna win you the damn game right. on a, on a single on a one roll. Right. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, ground shaker shells. One CP. You just strategy them in your shooting phase when selecting a target for an heavy lobber. Until the end of the phase, each time that model makes a ranged attack, if a hit is scored against a target that is not Titanic and cannot fly, then until the start of your next movement phase, halve the move characteristic of models in that unit and subtract two from the results of advance and charge rolls. For one CP, I don't know how relevant every lobbers are. I haven't read over the data sheets enough, but pretty good one CP strat. Uh, yeah, I, I think the heavy lob is on the, the kill, kill, kill rig. The kill rig, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's decent for one CP. Yeah, well, you know, you know, the issue there is, yeah, you're taking on a big, hard to hide, not inexpensive model, right? Um, so if someone wants to not have you let you have that, they can stop you from doing it by killing the model pretty easily. Right. Not like it's a small Thunderfire cannon that you can have freaking three of sitting <laughs> in one single ruin at the furthest possible point of the table. Yeah, <laughs> you get where I'm going. All right, last one. Force field boost a two CP. Use a stretch at the end of your opponent's shooting phase. At the start. At the start. Select one model in your army that is equipped with a custom force field. Until the end of the turn, replace that custom force field's ability with the following. Uh, basically, your custom force field goes from 6 inches to 9 inches and goes from a 6 plus to a 5 plus and vulnerable. At the end of the turn, the custom force field overloads and you cannot use it for the rest of the battle. Yeah, I think I, th- I think it's good. I, I do too. I can v- yeah. see I can see yeah. using that. That's, that's good. Mm. Um, all right, that brings us to the end of the stratagems, and um, I'm just going to put it out there right now. I feel like there's a page missing. I mean, I know there's not, but I feel like there is. <laughs> like, where's there's there's like so we got a strat for what? We got one strat for like Mega Knobs. We got one strat for Burner Boys. We got one strat for the freaking planes. Like, where's the strat? We got a strat for Flash Gits. Where's the strat? Where is the strat for Boys? Where's the strat for Storm Boys? Where's the strat for Commandos? Where's the strat for? I mean, I could just keep going. Regular Knobs, like. You know, yeah. I feel like there's like half a, a half a page missing, a page missing. No, I, um, I, I can see it. Where's Green Tide? But <laughs> Where's Green Tide? Where's a fight? So you've got to shoot again on a flash gets. That's fair. No fight again? None at all. Um, you know, if any army is going to get a fight again, other than Corn Demons or, you know, World Eaters, it should be this one. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I, yeah, I'm a bit quizzical about this. And I'm going to put it out there. There's nothing here that's kind of setting me on fire. There's a couple of good ones. Like, Kareen is... i got to put it out there. Kareen is one of the funniest stratagems I've ever seen. And when it happens to you, it's going to be magnificent. But, like, I mean, Get Stuck In Lads is good. Um, the Hit Em Hard is really cute. Like, if you're taking that... Hit Em Hard is freaking awesome. If you're taking that big unit of Mega Knobs or whatnot. Um, the plus two damage versus Titanic on the Warbots is amazing. Um, but, like, you know, you're cool. You've got some, you got some nice mainstays, like uh, Teleporter... Um, Unstop like uh like, but see, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. Yeah, like no, tired I, of I muscle, agree. Uh, head, strat- and that's I think why you see in in list builds. We'll talk about it later, but I see spending a lot of CP in the build, um, just because the stratagems are good, but not you know they're not they're not winning you the game. Yeah, this is that's it doesn't it's obvious that that's not where the power is. Right. The best stratagems seem to all be on the cultures. Yes. Yeah, they all seem to be on the culture. Yeah. I, actually, now I think about the ones that the cultures had, they're so much better than any of these. Yeah. Like, there's nothing... Like, wow! Like, obsec, deny obsec, you know, um, 
uh, dead sneaky, go back into reserve. Like the, that should just be a commando strat. Right. That should just be guerrilla tactics. Every commando should just get that. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So all this. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, fair enough. Fair enough, mate. That's it's just you know different different uh, metrics to build around. Yep. And it's I do like that they that that this is what it feels like though. It feels like you want to have a mob of of different stuff you don't want to just have here's my here's my one lucius detachment oh good i'm so clever right <laughs> there's, there's my dig it ad make for the day um yeah cool so we're, we're gonna call it here um how are you feeling about things so far and is there any strats that i didn't mention that you think people should really look at as like mainstays no the the only one that i can see personally i really like the i can't even remember what it's called the uh oh it's the get stuck in that one i can see using that multiple times a game that's just mm. movement. Which one's that? Movement is so it's the extra three inches on your pile in and consolidation. Oh yeah, for sure. That, that's right. that one. Cause that's where you steal objectives and you, you deny objectives and you get table quarters. There's all kinds of things you do with that. So that one is, that one is the one that, that stands out to me and it's one CP. So yeah, I see using that a lot. Not fair. Well, we might close this one out then, brother, and go on and record part two. We're going to talk about your charity hammer list. We're going to unpack it, talk about some list archetypes that are starting to emerge, where we want to, go, where we think orcs will, you know, go to for their first kind of competitive builds, and really just kind of how we how we think the the factions shaping up. If you're interested in that, please go over to artofwar40k.com or find uh, Art of War down under on Patreon. Sign up. Jump, jump in, get involved with the community. Anything you'd like to plug on the way out, Mister Mister Kilton? No, I I love talking orcs. So uh, yeah, if uh, if any of you out there just uh, ever want to chat orcs, I'm I'm online, and you can you can reach out on my Facebook or whatever. I don't have a cool website or anything, but I love orcs and always have. So fantastic man what a what a great indictment you've been such a, a wonderful ambassador for the faction for so damn long and uh yeah thanks for, thanks for coming on dude hopefully you end this season as you began it and you are number one orcs going in have you ever got have you ever been, uh, made number one orcs before i have uh i think twice have? um i I, Yikes. I think i think that the one the, i'll end with this the codex is really good but i'm actually pleased that it's not admech because okay I, no you're not gonna not, have you're gonna get less 10,000 of these amazing players that are jumping over to orcs. You'll have a lot of them, but you're not going to have all of them. So I I'm, I'm hoping that I can keep that, that number one orc and uh, keep it for the season and, uh, and finish strong. Nice man. Well, I hope you do too. Hopefully uh, th- another, a third time, but like perennial everlasting evergreen top of the orc pile. Thank you so much, my man. Take care. Good night. And we'll catch you on number two. Take care. Thank you for listening to Art of War Down Under, a content review podcast for Warhammer 40K, hosted by Adam Camilleri, produced by Seamus Ronan. Enjoyed the show? Want your lists reviewed and the content you heard put into practice? Sign up to our Patreon and connect with us online or on Facebook. Just search for Art of War Down Under, signing out from tomorrow. Tomorrow.